churna is defined as a fine powder of drug or drugs widely used in ayurvedic system of medicine for the treatment of gastric disorders colon malfunction obesity treatment sinus and other different ailments the crude drugs are clean properly dried thoroughly pulverized and it's passed through sieve number 80 the churna is a free flowing powder and retains its potency for one year if it is been preserved at a at tight container some common examples of churna include tripala churna trikotu churna ashwagandha churna the tripala churna is made from three popularly known herbs effective against digestive distress so we have amla bahida and haritaki amla being a rich source of vitamin c which strengthens digestive system we have the bahida which possesses anti inflammatory properties which rejuvenates the body and the haritaki which is rich in antioxidant and helps to fight constipation so the tripala churna provides quick relief from indigestion and constipation the other example being the trikotu churna which is the black pepper long pepper and the dried ginger gingiber officially which acts as a bio enhancer anti obesity and metabolism stimulant it is indicated in gout indigestion weight loss running nose hypercholesteremia and irritable bowel syndrome the preparation of churna the drugs are cleaned and dried properly they are finely powdered and sieved if more than one drug is present each drug is separately powdered sieved and weighed accurately and mixed together as per ayurvedic formulary of india the powders are passed through sieve number 80 utilization methods of churna which includes authentication organoleptic evaluation microscopical evaluation physiochemical analysis evaluation of powder and biological evaluation authentication of the churnas the proper selection of the plant parts used for churna like the leaf flower uh, root stem bark and the identity by its biological source and family the organoleptic evaluation involves the use of the senses and the common organoleptic evaluation characters include the color odor taste and we have the microscopical evaluation where the use of microscope is employed to standardize the drug for its identity and its uh, authentication so there are few parameters which are taken into account in microscopical evaluation which includes trichomes stomata crystals length of fiber calcium oxalate crystals etc so if you take this trichomes we have the covering trichomes and we have the unicellular covering trichome and the multicellular covering trichome under multicellular covering trichome we have the branched and unbranched structure similarly we have uh, the glandular trichome which is unicellular glandular trichome or the multicellular glandular trichome with respect to stomata we have different types of stomata like the laterocytic stomata where the stomata flanked by three or more subsidiary cells all bordering on the lateral side of the guard cell then we have the parasitic type of stomata where the one or two cells adjacent to the guard cells with their long axis parallel to the long axis of the guard cell 
Then we have the pericytic type of stomata where one cell encloses both the guard cells. Then we have the stephanocytic stomata where the stomata are surrounded by four or more, usually five to seven, weakly differentiated subsidiary cells. Then we have the tetracytic stomata where four cells adjacent to and enclosing the guard cell. So this is an example of a Katpal Churna where you can see the different powder characteristics which is very specific to each and every crude drug that is being added into the Churna. So for say for example the Katpal you can see that we have the uh, bas fiber, we have elongated parenchyma tessels with starch grains and the musta which is characterized by the stone cells and we have the pushkar which is characterized by the prismatic crystals and we have some elongated uh, lignified cells with pits and uh, oil globules. So this is an example of a microscopical evaluation of a, a Katpal Churna will look like. Determination of pH. One gram of churna is taken in a 100 ml volumetric flask and made up the volume to 100 ml with distilled water. The solution was sonigated for about 10 minutes and the pH was measured with the help of a digital pH meter. So each churna will have a different pH. So general pH range of churnas ranges between 3 to 9. Next, the standardization of churna based on the physicochemical constituents. We have the different physicochemical constituents like the moisture content, total ash, acid insoluble ash, water soluble ash, water air soluble extractive and alcohol soluble extractive. So moisture content. So excess moisture or insufficient uh, drying is responsible for spoilage of drug due to growth of microbes. Hence, the determination of moisture content is very important in terms of the physiochemical evaluation. So, moisture content determination is used to check the total water content in a given weight of the drug. So, excess moisture content in the drug sample suggests not only the purchaser would be paying a high price due to unwanted water, but also the drug has been incorrectly stored. So, the loss on drying azeotropic distillation method and the Carl Fisher method are used for the moisture content determination in a crude drug. Then comes the total ash. The total ash is nothing but the residue that is left out after incineration is the ash content of the drug which simply represents the inorganic salts naturally occurring in drugs or adhering to it in the form of adulteration it's usually used to detect contamination and adulteration like sand or earth which is added with the crude drug. The subtypes of total ash include the acid insoluble ash and the water soluble ash. So in acid insoluble ash, the residue that is obtained after extracting the total ash is treated with hydrochloric acid. It is used to detect the contamination from sand or soil, whereas the water insoluble ash is a part of the total ash content which is soluble in water. It is a good indicator of either the previous extraction of water soluble salt in, is, in the drug is done in a correct way or incorrect preparation. The extractive value generally represents the amount of active phytoconstituents in a given amount of medicinal plant material when extracted with solvent. Here the solvent may be alcohol or water. So it is employed for that material for which no chemical or biological assay method exists. So this extractive value is employed for the material where there is no chemical or biological assay method exists. So as mentioned in uh, Indian Pharmacopoeia 1996 and the British Pharmacopoeia 1980, so the determination of water soluble extractive 
and the alcohol soluble extractive is used as a means for evaluating crude drug which are not readily estimated by any other means. Next we have the other physical characteristics like the powder fineness. We have the churna which is passed to 80 to 120 mesh whereas the quata churna is passed to 40 to 80 mesh. Then we have the bulk density and the tap density, the angle of repose, the compressibility index and the harshness ratio. Let us see one by one in detail. So the bulk density. So bulk density is the ratio of a given mass of powder and its bulk volume. It is determined by transferring an accurately weighed amount of powder sample to a graduated cylinder with the aid of a funnel. So the initial volume was noted. The ratio of the weight of the volume it occupied was calculated. So the bulk density utilizes the formula W by V0 gram per ml where W is the mass of the powder and V0 is the untapped volume. Then we have the tap density. It is graduated cylinder was tapped continuously for a period of 10 to 15 minutes. The density can be determined as a ratio of the mass of powder to the tap volume. Tap volume is given by the formula W by Vf gram per ml where W is the mass of the powder whereas Vf is the tap volume. Then we have the angle of repose. The angle of repose is the internal angle between the surface of the pile of powder and the horizontal surface is known as the angle of repose. So the powder is passed through a funnel fixed to a burette at a height of 4 cm. A graph paper is placed below the funnel on the table. The height of the radius and the pile were measured. The angle of repose of the powder was calculated using the formula angle of repose equal to tan inverse h by r where h is the height of the pile and r is the radius of the pile. Then the compressibility index. So it is the propensity of the powder to be compressed. Based on the apparent bulk density and the tap density, the percentage compressibility of the powder can be determined using the formula tap density minus bulk density divided by tap density into 100. Then we have the harshness ratio which is indicating the flow properties of a powder. So the ratio of the tap density to the bulk density of the powder is called harshness ratio. So harshness ratio is a simple index that can be determined on small quantities of powder. So the harshness ratio with a value greater than 1.25 considered to be having a powder with good flow. The range between 1.5 to 1.5 is considered to be a moderate and the range below 1.5 is considered to be a powder with poor flow property. So uh, the chart explains about the relationship between the angle of repose, the car index and the harshness ratio with respect to their flow properties. A churna is considered to be excellent if the angle of repose is between 25 to 30 and the car index greater than 10 and harshness ratio between the range 1 to 1.11 and it is considered to be good if the angle of repose is between the values 31 to 35 and the cars index between the range 11 to 15 and the harshness ratio between 1.12 to 1.18 and the flow property is considered to be fair if the angle of repo is between 36 to 40 and the cars index between 16 to 20 and the harshness ratio between 1.19 to 1.25 so a uh, flow property uh, is determined using the angle of repo cars index and harshness ratio a churna with excellent flow property is considered as a good formulation. 
Then we have the test for heavy metals where heavy metals are generally defined as metals with relatively high density, atomic weight or atomic numbers. The most commonly uh, found heavy metals are the lead, the mercury, the cadmium, chromium and arsenic. So the table below gives the specifications as per the WHO standard for medicinal plants and their acceptable limits for the heavy metals in different regions. So you can see uh, the different uh, levels, acceptable limits with respect to India, arsenic, lead, cadmium, chromium and the mercury. So for the detection of heavy metals in churnas, there are two uh, common methods, uh, limit test and the flame photometry method. Then we have the advanced methods which includes the X-ray diffraction method, the X-ray fluorescence spectrophotometer method, the atomic absorption spectrophotometry method and the inductively coupled uh, plasma mass spectroscopy method. Then we have the test for uh, pesticides. The WHO and FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization, set limits for pesticides which are usually present in the herbs. The pesticides are mixed with the herbs during the time of cultivation. So the different uh, pesticides that are usually uh, considered for detection in achurnas uh, using a GCMS system includes the organo uh, chlorine pesticides uh, like endosulfan, then organo pesticides uh, pesticides like ethionine and you have the pyrethroids. Then we have the test for microbial contamination of churnas. The microbial contamination might be due to the moles and the atmosphere that is present in the plants during cultivation. The total aerobic count, the enterobacteric count and the total fungal count are taken into account. And the test for specific pathogens like E. coli, Salmonella species and Pseudomonas species are tested. So if you take uh, for uh, herbal preparations, uh, usually uh, the limits are displayed in the chart as provided. Then we have the test for aflatoxins. Aflatoxin is probably the most commonly and widely known mycotoxin contaminant. It is produced by the mold aspergillus flavors and aflatoxins B1, B2, G1 and G2 are most common uh, referred to as toxins and they are determined using thin layer chromatography. Uh, also uh, high performance thin layer chromatography and ELISA enzyme linked sorbent assay is used for the detection of the aflatoxins in churnas. So the TLC is mostly uh, the widely used method for the detection of aflatoxins. Uh, you can see uh, uh, that a, a TLC uh, of a aflatoxin detection which is shown in the PPT. Then we have the determination of uh, shelf life. The shelf life is uh, determined uh, using uh, uh, the ICH guidelines uh, as per uh, the Q1AR2. There are two modes, one is accelerated stability testing and other one is a real-time stability testing. So the accelerated stability testing is performed based on the uh, uh, increased accelerated conditions like the increased temperature 40 degrees Celsius uh, plus or minus 2 and relative humidity between 75 percentage plus or minus 5. Whereas in case of uh, real-time stability, the temperature range is between 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus 2 and the relative humidity being 60 percentage plus or minus 5. So the dosage is uh, observed for six months in case of uh, uh, accelerated stability testing, whereas uh, in case of uh, real-time stability testing, uh, uh, a one-year study is being involved uh, where the sample is estimated at the intervals of uh, 0, 1, 3, 6 and 12 months. So the shelf life is also considered as an important parameter in uh, studying the stability study uh, the organoleptic characters like color, odor and taste are determined. The physicochemical parameters like loss on drying, pH, total ash, water soluble extractive, bitter residue, total uh, saponin and total tannin content, total phytoconstants are also taken into account. And the microbial load is also uh, calculated. So the number of months when 10% degradation was occurred was calculated using the formula. So the ambient temperature and humidity for zone 1 and zone 2 countries are 
21 degree celsius and 45 percentage relative humidity and 25 degree celsius and 60 percent relative humidity for zone 2 for zone 3 and zone 4 it is 30 degree celsius and 35 percentage relative humidity and 30 degree celsius and uh, 70 percent relative humidity respectively for uh, zone 3 and zone 4 so india comes under the climatic zone of zone 3 and zone 4 so these are the few uh, references in summary the standardization of churna includes authentication organoleptic evaluation microscopical evaluation physical chemical standards like uh, total ash acid insoluble ash water uh, soluble extractive alcohol soluble extractive loss on drying and the flow properties were studied using bulk density tap density compressibility study index uh, harshness ratio uh, safety evaluation parameters include the microbial uh, study the aflatoxin study and heavy metal estimation study uh, shelf life evaluation uh, using accelerated and real time uh, testing so uh, with this uh, i'm concluding the session on the standardization of churna uh, so these are some of the parameters which are studied for a standardization of churna so thanks for your attention and thank you